on this computer, I think. It's doing it, okay, cool. Right, um, I hope you're all well, and this will be a nice distraction for, you know, everything that's happening in life. Uh, what? Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, right, let me just move these things that are in the way. Okay, cool. Right, basically, today we're talking about a really cool guy who is an artist called Idris Khan. And fun fact, I've actually met the guy. Really cool. Um, so Alice, Alice, oh my god, Alice seriously shut up. <laughs> anyway, please ignore her. Um, so Idris Khan, I first learned about when I was doing my photography A level, and I thought, oh, this is cool. I could like do some inspired work by him. And I met him at um it's an art event called Freeze. Um, Freeze Art Fair, which is based in New York, London, LA, and he, um, it's a very big event where loads of artists and photographers and sculptural um, artists um, submit work throughout um, a period of time, and then it's on a big exhibition for like a month or so in each location, and he had some work um, there in 2018, and he was doing a talk at Freeze, which is at the National Gallery, and it was all about his recent project that he'd done, which I'm uh don't think i've included in this presentation but you can read up about it and also just to give some insight into a sort of photographer amongst the artists um that were there and he was a really nice guy and i went up to him at the end after his little talk and i was like hi um you like were a big inspiration to me like while i was doing my photography and honestly he was such a nice guy and he was so down to earth so normal so um I really recommend like reading further into him and um, just learning more about him as a person because I actually thought he was a really genuinely like nice guy. You know when famous people are a bit like up themselves, he wasn't like that at all. Um, so yeah. Um, so let's learn a bit more about him. So oh, that is not working. So about him, he is London born and based and he's received international acclaim for his minimal yet emotionally responsive photographs, videos and sculptures. This is another thing. Um, I come from more of an art background, but I um, wanted to choose Idris because he is most well known for his photography. However, he does do a lot of recently, a lot of sculptures um, with a lot of different materials. And he also uses a mixture of art techniques within his photography which i think is really um nice that we can talk about in today's abstract session because i think we haven't really con we haven't really covered that the idea of like art blended in with photography and i think it's a really um interesting way which i hope a lot of you would then experiment with in your own work um all his work medium is focused on his investigation into the way in which cultural visual cinematic and temporal memories Coles oh, God, I can't say this word. I think it's such a nice word. Colossus? Colossus? Something like that. Into a, into a dense synthetic hole. So he has like a quite a... You can spot his style from a mile away, but mile away because it's very like similar colours, tone and just atmospheric feel. Um, this graphic does not look as good as it actually is. I'm very sorry. Did not realise that. But it's of um, sub Tower Bridge in London. And... Um, yeah, London Bridge, and um, no, not London Bridge, it is Tower Bridge, um, and we'll go into that in a bit later. <laughs> um, draw, his work draws on diverse cultural sources, including literature, history, art, music, and religion. He's developed a unique narrative involving densely layered imagery that inhabits the space between abstraction and figuration and speaks to the themes of history, cumulative experience, and the metaphoric collapse of time into singular, single moments. So he uses a different mediums to express this, but his photography is all developed in a post-production atmosphere. He doesn't like go into a location and think, okay, I'm going to abstract this. Like he always thinks about that in the afterthought and that's where the art really comes into practice. And I think that's an important thing that you want to think about because when you're taking photographs, you think, okay, how am I going to take this landscape in more of an abstract way? Or how am I going to take this um, sort of like architectural building in an abstract way? Like that's all great, but what you have also got to think about is the way you can abstract after you've taken the photo. And what Idris does is really explore that and get getting creative with different processes 
and tools you can use that aren't just editing and Photoshop. So he's also had a lot of famous commissions. So like I said, he was part of, he's been part of the Freeze um, exhibitions for a lot of years. He's been like very international. Um, one of his really cool um, commission examples I wanted to mention was his New York Times magazine for the Olympics, the Winter Olympics. He, um, he got to like take these really cool photos of um, some of the athletes, so like the skiers and ice skatery people. Um, <laughs> I don't know what they are. And it's this idea of um, creating densely layered imagery that inhabits the space between abstraction and figuration, collapse, collapsing time and cumulative experience into a single moment. And I think what that was really cool with the idea of the Olympics, how the Olympics is multiple different countries all coming together in one place for the idea of sport and the idea of um, passion and drive and how he captures that in his art I think is really amazing and I think it's you don't often think of abstract photography within sport photography so I thought this is a really interesting idea and in how you can make anything you want abstract and just really get creative with it um, and there's some more examples he obviously works a lot in black and white as you can tell but he also did a um, color version of this um, with some different um, uh, sports people, I think they were figure skaters. These are like the, these are like the speed people. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I need to watch more of the Winter Olympics, but um, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. So you can go look at that. Um, this is another photograph of his in the background, which I'll go into in depth later. His style of working relies on the continuous process of creation and uh, erasure, or the adding of new layers while retaining traces of what has gone before. He's well known for his large scale works in which techniques of layering are used to arrive at what might be considered the essence of an image and to create something entirely new through rep repetition and superimposition. So you might have had a go at this on your own in Photoshop or the idea of like using layers and like blurring parts of an image or maybe um, superimposing stuff to make it look a different size. And that's great. Um, when I was working like after the inspiration of his work, what I did was I took some pictures, as you do, of some architectural shots similar to his London shots. And I thought, I know I might try, they were taken on film, black and white film. I might try and develop them at different um, strengths. So I did some that were very overexposed and then underexposed. And I printed them off, developed them, all that in the dark room. And then I had a go at layering them afterwards i scanned them onto photoshop so they were these different like layers of exposure and you can do this digitally as well so you can like adjust the settings on your camera with the idea of how exposure can then abstract an image and then layering these different versions of it on top um, and then another way how i was inspired by his was his use of texture which i'll go into a little bit but um i'm just going over it so Sadly, we don't have a dark room at uni, which you can do this with, but I highly recommend when we're able to do so to go and hire out one if you can, because there's some great ways you can get creative with dark rooms if you're using black and white film or colour film. Um, you can paint the um, developer onto the paper and then it can develop in certain areas of the, um, the photo that you want exposed. And um, you can also do it in different layers, like you can do like a line and then like a gap and a line and you can get really creative with it or like flick water on it and see what it exposes. It's just another way of making abstract um, imagery from an image that you've already taken. It's all about that idea of the afterthought, that's what the main focus of this is. Um, uh, another way you could also try, so like with this image you can see these um, different layers of, um, you've got like a chalk, it's like a chalkboard I think. Um, so what I did was, um, I don't know what the paper's called, it's like acetate or something. Um, and it's like clear plastic you can then put over an image that you've printed out and then get biro and you can work into an image like tracing and like shading as if you're drawing or painting um, and then building up the layers that way. And also with um, that white stuff that you use, um, you know, when you're at school and you use like that white stuff, what's it called? Um, um oh my god what's it called anyway it's like this white it's like a um it's like a barrow but it's thicker than that and it's white and you can like draw tipex. on tipex that is it there we go yeah so you can use tipex on this um 
along with biro and then if you put biro on top of tipex it creates a similar look that what this image on the screen has and it's the idea of creating a sort of depth and texture within an image and then layering it on top um and just playing around with it um it's just, i just want to get people thinking like in other ways of like how to abstract an image afterwards and i thought idris would be perfect for that because he just was like so he's just so cool um and you know you've got to think in terms of like more of like an art perspective to abstract afterwards like the idea of you could put like certain materials in like glass or um that could glass look really nice if you had some like architectural photographs and then you print them out put some glass into the photo where there's glass just to create these different levels of um texture within an image and then like frame it and put just, it, it's fun like just get you just have got to have fun with it you know um, so these are his famous London pictures. Um, he also has a really famous London Eye one, which I forgot to put in because I'm stupid. But um, one of my favourites is the St Paul's one because I think it's just really powerful. And then he's got the Big Ben one. And they're all edited in the same way. And um, his style is very prominent. And they create this kind of like ghostly feel. I don't know about what you think, but the idea of like time passing, but also how even though it looks like it's moving, it's also very still. And I think that's really clever and just an interesting approach. And I think um, it'd be fun to recreate, you know, you could, anyone could recreate these, just pop the image in black and white, have a little play around on Photoshop or Lightroom and just, you know, just like try out different exposures, even when you're taking the pictures and like move them around. You could even like rotate um, parts of the buildings so with the St. Paul's, you could have it, yeah, facing that way, but you could also rotate it round. So it's the opposite. So it's like a reflective mirror. And then see how that looks like with layers and, you know, just like have an idea of that sort of thing. Um, right. Then we've got, um, I'm going to talk about contrasting two of his abstract images. These are very abstract. Like when you look at these, you can kind of be like, okay, yeah, that's London. Cool like a cool looking London scene, right? And this is like, what is that? Okay. <laughs> um, so this is when his work looks a bit more sort of abstract, arty, even though it was done with a photographic um, backstory. So we've got this one first, and I'm gonna tell you a bit about the backstory of that. So he has called um, phrases in oil stick, roughly wiped them away, and scored again and again till his black square is blackened over. He has done the same thing in reverse with chalk and blackboards. So this is where his artistic eye comes in. The phrases are not random, but as the exhibition title suggests, oh yeah, this was a response to the waves of image of bloody conflict that now wash over us. So his idea was about the um, sort of like the emotional feelings of war. And um, so, uh, let me go back. Response to the ways of images of bloody conflict that now wash over us, each one superimposing itself on the last, creating its own fuzzy fog of war. Khan has always pushed photography towards the painterly, so he does work quite as an artist in his um, editing and photo photographic style. His repeated marks act like brush strokes, which is very um, similar to like an impressionist style. And in a series of five platinum prints, so this was an exhibition. Um, room and he had like five of these all in a row. The results of printing process that produce a rich tonal range and normal printing with a matte finish. His abstractive scroll has become almost monochrome watercolours and if Khan's process is more hidden than these images the effect is more complex and haunting. So again this idea of sort of like a ghostly feel, haunting feel, it's quite emotionally like I think when you know a bit more about the story I think it really hits you and I really like the idea of how so he used um, printing and I don't know if any of you have done screen printing before. Um, another thing you can also think about to abstract an image is what you then um, print the material, uh, print, print the photograph on. So you could print it um, on material, you could print it on cardboard, like um, fabric, uh, acetate. That looks really cool. So a thing you could try is if you printed out a photo on this clear plastic acetate stuff, in black and white you can then see through it and then layer that on top of um, an image to create the that style um, so that's why i included this image from the series because it gets you the idea of thinking about okay what other materials can i use to make my images a bit more abstract and different and just change up a bit um, then another series of his was these kind of um, abstract water towers right 
um, there was a water tower in my old school and I went and took some pictures of it because I was like, yeah, I'm Idris Khan. And, <laughs> um, and it was really creepy. It was like this World War Two water tower and it was really, it had like this weird fence around it. Um, but I think they, I think the whole idea of what he captured in terms of then making that abstract as well. So yes, even though he took pictures of very, you know, obvious landmarks, tourist landmarks, he then goes to something really random like a water tower or a gas reservoir. And I think it's so interesting how you then choose architectural um, pieces to then abstract them. So here's some context behind it. So Burns and Hill Hiller um, are these photographers and then Idris took his own idea of um, abstracting the idea. So his series, um, like that imagery, um, why is my Siri coming out? I'm so sorry. Um, and then he compiles their collections of um, single super images into one. So the idea of layering. And this was um, on exhibition at the start, I believe. Um, in this piece, multiple images of American style gabled houses are digitally layered and superimposed, giving the effect of an impressionistic drawing or blurred film still. Um, so I remember I took pictures of this reservoir, not reservoir, the water tower I found in film, and I practiced different exposures on it and then layered it in a similar style to this, but mine was very much, it didn't look like it was moving, it was more about the exposure. Um, whereas with this one, it looks almost like the water tower is like turning and was like speed. Um, and then these are the other two, so he had these, they just look they don't look real, do they? And I think they almost look a bit horror film kind of look. And I think with the three of them together, I think it's a really interesting feel and how it makes you feel when you... Just like looking at objects and architectural pieces and thinking, how could I make that look abstract? Or is it already abstract? If so, how could I create an image of it that's even more so? What could I do in terms of the colour, the composition? how I edit it, how I shoot it, um, and then how I present it to people. So I think with the whole idea of presenting it as a series, it also creates a very different effect if it was just one singular image. Um, so I think you should always bear that in mind as well. Um, the following images, I just wanted to, I'll talk briefly about them, but then I would like some people to sort of share their thoughts on each image and sort of respond in a way of how they make you feel. Um, or you can talk about any of the other images that you've seen in this slideshow and be like, oh, that one was my favorite and why. Um, so this first one, not gonna lie, no idea what it is, but <laughs> you can, the reason I chose it is because it reminds me very much of the German expressionist technique of painting. And also the idea of how film noir films were filmed after the um, inspiration of German Expressionist techniques, they were all about contrasting lines, harsh shadows, bright lights angled at weird um, angles. <laughs> and um, this image is very grainy, it's got lots of different layers and textures built into it. And you can almost see the, like the picture plane dimension is everywhere. Like you can't, there's sort of like a central focus point, but you also can't really tell. Um, and that's built up from the layering, and it's very similar to a painting style. And you can make out certain objects like there's like um, lights on the left um, here and the right, but you're still not 100% sure what it is. And you can also see the angles here and here, like a square. And the idea of like, am I, is it the depth going inwards or outwards? Um, and I think it's really interesting. The more you look at it, the more things you notice and where the shadows are. And to me, it makes me feel very, kind of gives me a bit of a headache but it also makes me feel quite cold. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Um, so that's that one. Second one is this one. So this was a commission that he worked with um, Marino uh, Testino, who's a famous portrait photographer. He did a lot of work with um, the royal family and celebrities like that, um, doing a lot of their famous portraits. And I think this image is really interesting. So it's like a blur of, it's the first um, image that we've seen of Idris Khan's that has people in it. And he's captured them in the same sort of way of like his London pictures, but something about it just makes it look really ghostly. Like you can see, there's like a face down here. That's probably the most clear face you can see. And it looks like the Joker to me, to be honest. 
and then like kind of like a skull and um it kind of draws on the idea of the um fauvist movement in art where they often had um paintings of people in large group gatherings and especially the women but also the men they were they were um presented in a very like uh their masks looking like faces like it didn't wasn't no real facial faces features it was all very strong like big eyes dark like big heads like very like a mask like prominent features and this is what this reminds me of and how you just you can sense the movement and the atmosphere that like you can almost hear it and you're not really sure what it's just that mumble of atmosphere and noise and i think it's really powerful um and you can also see the layering here you can see an outline of someone's um trousers and like heads and maybe like hats here and you can just sort of begin to wonder about what's going on who are they why are they all jumbled in together what other textures are there and it's quite a chaotic feeling but i think it's really interesting and i really like it um these next two are two photographs of examples where he's used other um materials so on the right he, he i can't remember fully but he did a commission um in Dubai, he did this wall um, at a gallery in Dubai, I think, and it includes, so he wrote out the Quran and he then layered the, as you can see here, um, a lot of the um, uh, like paragraphs and chapters and things, um, and into like an abstract piece all along this wall. And I think that was really interesting. And I think um, it'd be quite a cool idea of how you can use words and um sentences even like the idea of poetry into your photography so you could base your photography on an idea of poetic um, reading or religious reading and then reflect that in an image or you can use the idea of layering certain words or phrases or like big chunky paragraphs like he's done here onto an actual image and see the effect of that um i've seen this like there's been loads of people on tumblr who have done like um portraits with um like like a paragraph over the person's face um if it has a significant meaning to that person i think that's a really um cool idea that you could take on this approach um but with the image on the left what i like about it is there's obviously an image behind it and he's chosen to then write very abstracted sentences and words over the top so then um layered and layered and layered to the point where you then actually can't see the image and it's this depth of imagery and words combined together and i think it's really powerful um and i also just like the comparison of both images and the different languages even though you can't really tell which language that is on the left but you can tell it's his writing um but abstracted and then i think this looks really beautiful and um i definitely go and have a look at more of his um more art based work if you're interested in that because he does some really interesting stuff um but it's also the idea of how he works like in terms of his photography and art he also does videos he does a lot of video installations um and short films and um the like as i said at the beginning his main things are causing like an emotional response but also the use of layering and creating depth um to create that sort of emotional response from an audience and i think he does that very well and the, obviously his theme does follow black and white a lot um so i'll go back to um these images if anyone wants to say something I mean, you can say something about any image that we've looked at um honestly it's open for everyone so if you would like to speak please just unmute yourself I'm just going to say the series of photos where there's like three of them. Uh, the London all, yeah, both these ones and the London ones. I don't know, just by having something to complement the other photos, it makes them seem much more than they are on their own. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I don't know. I just love the series. Mm. I think he um, he works like prominently in London, like that's where he's based. And I think he wanted to just sort of reflect upon that sort of place in his life. And I think it's a really interesting way to do it. And I think 
you know you could even like set yourself a little project like even just to go and take pictures of like Holloway or like around Egham in an abstract way and I think I don't know just like it's really cool it's a fun project you know (laughs) know. it is and that photo of um Big Ben looks like a forest to me which I really like yeah I didn't think of that yeah I love it yeah that is cool yeah but I must say like imagine if you did it with trees or something in this style how cool would that look oh yeah that'd be really cool someone should do that <laughs> it's something to do now that lockdowns yeah exactly because you can go on nice walks so, yeah <laughs> someone go do that that'd be cool we can post it on the instagram the question is how did he how how did he create this these ones yeah um he used post-production editing so he, um, I think I wrote it. Uh, he uses, like, he superimposes. Um, so he does repetition of layering. So in an editing system, and then he superimposes them so they all fit within a frame. So I think there was, I read somewhere that it was like, there was like over 50 of one image in one image. And it was literally like amazing. Um, but it's very easy to, have a go of it yourself you just have to um kind of know your um way around photoshop a bit but there's lots of videos to explain that on um youtube and things um but yeah it's very cool or have a go of different exposures and layering on top that's another example Can we flick forwards a few slides? I'm trying to remember which one it was. The this one, yeah. Yeah. It's one of those photos where the longer you look at it, the more you see. Yeah, literally. And as well, you see the dark spots in like mm-hmm. just slightly off to the left. I don't know about anybody else, but I can see a hand. Whereabouts? With like the dark spots, so oh. each line oh, of the yeah. dark spot going up. Oh, like, hang on, wait, so that's a finger? Yeah. And then that goes up, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see that. Yeah, it was just one of those. Yeah, this is one of his ones that has, I think this is the one of the ones that I read, it has like over 100 images imposed onto it or something. Yeah, makes like, sense. How ridiculous is that? That's, it's so Mad. trippy. It's probably yeah. trippy. Very, very, very trippy. I can see it's so weird. Good, it's, it? uh, it's cool though. Yeah. That's, like you said, the more you look, the more you see. I see so many faces right now in this. It yeah, it's like busy. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Um. It's a bit horrifying as well at the same time. Yeah, that's I quite, that's quite kind of why I like it though. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know that face you said that's really really clear. It's the only face that's like yeah that one. Yeah. It looks like a guy screaming or like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Terrifying. It's, it's, yeah, it's just terrifying. Honestly. It's not nice. Like, Something out of my nightmares. Yeah, if cool. you do that in your sleep, I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a nightmare. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> It's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody got any questions? I have a question not related to yeah. any of the photos. I'm wondering if you would be willing to share the photos you took inspired by him. Yeah. Um, hang on, wait, hang on, let me think. I, I was thinking they were in this room. They're in a sketchbook of mine. All right. Which I think is in the attic, but yeah. I could go up and get them and then put them on the chart. Yeah, just when, when you've got time. I just think it'd be really yeah. cool to see them. No, they're cool because um, they explain what I was what I was talking about that I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I still have all them because they were they're just really they're really fun to do, and I really I think showing people like the process of it will actually then make more sense rather than just saying go and get some acetate um so i'll try and dig them out tonight um and then post them like you could even like just share them on 
something, I don't know. Um, or put them on like the po um, an Instagram post saying, here's some ideas to just sort of get abstract after you've taken an image. I think that's, that's the main focus of this session, I think. Um, yes. it's, it's all things you can do at home as well, you know? Um, like, yeah, uh, it's cool. Like you could easily recreate this photo if you like, even without doing all the editing stuff, you could take a, a photo um, as like a, you could take it at low shutter speed um, and then get a biro or even like paint and you could like work into the image to create this sort of blurred sort of hashed out angles effect. Um, I don't know. That's just another right way. I just thought my brain works. But um, if anyone has any other questions about any of these, um, yeah. He's also um, one of, he's such a nice guy, guys, as well. <laughs> I literally, I was like so nervous. I was like, oh my God, like, he's the guy I like wrote about for my essay. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go up to him. And I like went out and I was like, hi. <laughs> and he was just so chill. It was so nice. Um, so yeah. When I put the Instagram post up, I tagged him hoping he'll like, at least like you or something. But we got nothing. Yeah. Do you think he would? Huh? I don't know, because the thing is, right, I don't know, on Instagram, like, he doesn't have a blue tick. I don't know if that's his main account, or if, like, someone made it, made an account. He's not oh my god, who have you tagged? Oh, my god. <laughs> oh yeah, do we want to stop the recording? Oh, yeah, sorry. Just before we get into waffle territory. Hello. <laughs> also, he's not, like, um, did I pause it or stop? Pause slash stop.